the annual Jefferson County Public Schools State of the District. Here is Superintendent Dr. Marty Polio. Good afternoon. I'm Marty Polio, Superintendent of Jefferson County Public Schools. At JCPS, we keep trying new things. This is definitely a first for me. I usually give this State of the District address before an in-person audience. We've never done this on television, but this is definitely a great way to connect with you, and it's important to me to be here with you today. I want to thank WLKY for providing this opportunity for JCPS. First off, I want to thank every one of you who's had an impact on a JCPS student's life in the last year. Our educators, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, next door neighbors, you've all helped a child get through a really tough year. So many great organizations have stepped up to help. Families during this time like Evolve 502, Humana, Brown Foreman, and groups who've supported students at learning hubs. From all of us at JCPS, we can't thank you enough for helping our 96,000 students throughout non-traditional instruction. I am extremely grateful for the chance to introduce some of you to what Jefferson County Public Schools is really all about. I'm equally excited to further connect with our families and staff to share our new way forward. I'm going to tell you about our plans for a safe reopening of school and detail my recommendation to our Board of Education about when I believe our schools can reopen. I will also share our accomplishments over the past year and our future state, which includes plans to recover lost learning during the pandemic. The future state is our roadmap to improving student outcomes. There is no doubt about it. These past 11 months have been challenging, but I believe every challenge is really just an opportunity to grow stronger and become even more bold. That's where we are in JCPS. Gone is the time of doing things the way we've always done them. We have great schools and educators, but we are just starting to make the major changes to this district. These are the changes needed to ensure the success of all students. That is all we have ever wanted. There is no greater feeling than st seeing students achieve. That is why I initially liked coaching so much. My goal was always to be a basketball coach. But as fate would have it, there was a different path for me. Leading JCPS through challenging times and transformation is definitely my life calling. You spend countless nights thinking about how to make the best decision for our community. But in the end, the decision is always right in front of me. Do what's best for students. When I announced we'd be closing schools in March of 2020, I initially didn't think it would be possible for us to have more than 90,000 students learning remotely. Tens of thousands of students in our district didn't have access to a computer or Wi-Fi connectivity, and that's definitely a digital divide. Then we did something we often do in JCPS. We dared to believe. We believed in the unlimited possibilities of JCPS students, and we believed in our educators. You've heard it from me but I want you to hear it from them. I think our heart has been redefined and almost, uh, you know, found its purpose during this whole pandemic. And I'm ready to get back in that building and love on my kids. We never stop believing in our students. We never stop believing in their potential and we never stop being there. After March 13th, everything just like disappeared like all the things that i cared about it was just gone when they sent us home in march you know we went home and we were thinking oh in a couple weeks we'll be back so we all left out with a backpack and a laptop and almost a full year later we're still there you know Thank you. Thank you, multiplying length times width if it's a rectangle I present to you the graduating class of 2020. This past year has been a challenge. <laughs> I say that with laughter, right? It's also been rewarding as well because it's given all of us an opportunity to grow. We are one big family and, and we look out for each other. Those are some of our incredible educators and you can tell how much they care. Our educators have worked tirelessly this past year and have risen to the challenge to make this work. 
I quickly discovered that not only could students learn, but lives could be changed, even in our virtual reality. There are more than 160 schools in JCPS with one vision, our students will become success stories. We have more than 17,000 employees, but we are one family. Thank you to our educators for taking on the unthinkable and continuing to overcome so many obstacles. We have dared to believe what could be accomplished in the face of true adversity. Our educators have changed course, broken down traditions, and said yes, yes to starting over and yes to kids. The closure of our schools not only changed how we operate, it turned your life at home upside down too. We know it hasn't been easy and we thank you for your support. By working together, we can bring our students back to school and see the joy of learning in person again. We must re-engage our students in learning opportunities that are relevant to their futures. We are helping students to see this every day through our backpack of success skills. Every single student in the 5th, 8th, and 12th grade presents examples of how they are ready to move on to the next level before a panel of adults. I was concerned when we went into NTI it would be difficult to continue with our focus on the backpack of success skills. However, the backpack defenses from our students have been so inspiring during this pandemic. These presentations have always been such a moving moment for me, and it really does remind me of my why behind all of our work. And that's what I challenge our employees to do. Remember your why. This is Macy Padilla Frieson. She is from the Philippines and is a student at the Newcomer Academy. She'd only been in Louisville for less than a year when she had to present her backpack defense in front of myself and the mayor in 2019. As you can imagine, Macy was a little nervous to stand up and give a presentation in English. But with encouragement and support, this young lady was able to stand before a room of adults and share her meaningful learning experiences. I will never forget Macy and all of our students who overcome so much and become successful. Macy was able to do that because of the relationships that were developed at her school. Seeing her teachers in that moment gave her the courage to complete what at first seemed impossible, and that was so inspiring to me. That type of in-person experience is incredible. We know that nothing replaces the power of in-person learning. Every single day that a student is with us in person is an opportunity to change the trajectory of their life. We'll be able to safely offer in-person learning. After months of planning and preparing, our schools are ready to reopen. Over the last year, our operations team has secured more than 4 million masks for students and staff. We have spent millions of dollars to make sure our schools have the personal protective equipment or PPE they need for a safe reopening. You can see from these images the amount of equipment that is stored in our warehouse right now and will be sent to our schools for reopening. There are several thousand boxes full of PPE your children and our staff need. No school will go without the essential protective resources required to safely open schools. We will follow the expectations established by state leaders when our schools reopen. Social distancing guidelines, students and staff will, will wear masks. PPE will be available at schools. Health and safety screenings will take place. Sanitation protocols will be in place. And there will be a process for contact tracing if there is a confirmed case of COVID-19 at the school. For the past year, we have monitored state and national guidance, adjusted and been able to pivot easily to ensure all safety measures are in place. We will follow the guidance from state health officials, and we are even working to ensure a nurse or medical professional will be at every school when our buildings reopen. Your safety is more important to us than anything else. Our schools have developed thorough plans to adhere to the guidance. Each school's individual plan can be viewed on our website. While you can read about the plans online, I want to show you what it will be like at one of our schools. Here is a tour of Goodermuth Elementary. An example of a classroom that has six feet of distance in between desks. We have been planning for months and months uh, for our return to school. And we adjust the plan as we get new information from the CDC and from KVE. One of those classrooms, the kindergarten room, has seats six feet apart. So if we must do six feet apart, we can make that work. The other classroom has seats that are distanced as far as possible. In both classrooms, students are facing forward, students are masked. In the morning, if a student would come through this doorway, bus riders and walkers, they would have an adult 
helping them get off the bus in a distanced manner. Their next stop would be a table where their temperature would be taken. If a student did not have a fever, the student would then go to the next spot you see on the floor right there, which is hand sanitizer. As soon as they walk in, the very next step is the breakfast kiosk where they would pick up a grab and go breakfast. The biggest challenge will be that very first day, getting them to pay attention to the X's, okay? But that's why we have many adults stationed in our plan along this route to show them that. When we let them off the bus, the adult in charge of the bus lets them off slowly, two students at a time. Arrival's gonna take longer. The master schedule allows for spacing in between lunch so that the cafeteria can be sanitized in between that lunch time. I think the great big topic has been around ventilation. And, um, you know, there, there are, we've heard over and over again from our HVAC guys that, that our systems are um, capable of doing what's been called on to do for uh, COVID-19. The social distancing is important, but it is also one of many things that are important. And so all these measures together are the things that will help keep kids and staff safe. I think kids are used to social distancing to a degree now. It's become much more of the norm than it has been in the past. I trust our kids completely to get that, I do. Kids wanna be back. Kids will, will have these processes to follow. And, and I think, um, I don't wanna underestimate what people will do when uh, we consider the impact of COVID and that these are things that we have to do to be able to do in-person learning. We don't want school to start and then have to close it again. And I, so I think that everybody will continue to pay attention to these, these measures that are gonna help us prevent transmission. That's just one example of what our school buildings will look like, thanks to the team at Gutermuth for the tour. When our school buildings reopen, it will not be school like we all left it in March. School is going to look and feel different, but at its core, it will still be the same place we all love. There's nothing better than being in a classroom and seeing a child truly engage in the learning process and succeed. This will happen again with a safety first approach. Caring adults will be in our buildings ready to support children. The most important thing we have to do is welcome our children back and into our buildings with an open heart and an understanding of all that has happened since we last saw them in person last March. We get up every day and say, what opportunity will I have to make a difference in a child's life? NTI has been difficult because so many of our children benefit from the services and relationships they have with JCPS educators on a daily basis. As a result of the past year, we will need to be very intentional about supporting our students, both academically and through social and emotional support. This is going to require an intense focus on supporting kids over the next several years. Reopening our schools is one of the most complex things we will do in JCPS. It's definitely one of the big, biggest logistical scenarios we've ever had to face. And with each step we take, we do it with health and safety in mind. This is what we've spent the last year preparing for. There's gonna be additional employees at all of our elementary schools to support learning and help ensure social distancing as much as absolutely possible. Thermometers will be available to families to check their child's temperature before they go to school. New equipment will be in place at some schools to help with airflow and ventilation. And we are also working on a plan to have water filling stations at every single school. Each school will designate a healthy at school officer to keep track of any positive cases at the school. Medical personnel at each school will work with JCPS Health Services to conduct contact tracing in coordination with the health department. The healthy at school team will provide support to a student who has to be in quarantine. There will also be a health room at every school for any child that becomes ill during the day. These are just a few of the measures being taken for the protection of our school communities. Another major step in our planning was definitely the vaccination of our employees. Over the past few weeks, more than 12,000 JCPS educators were vaccinated at the LUVAC site at Broadbent Arena. This was an extraordinary partnership with the Louisville Metro Health Department. To see our team get this shot of hope was not only encouraging, but it definitely reaffirmed my belief that we can reopen our schools. Thank you to Governor Andy Bashir for prioritizing educators and valuing their safety as we continue to battle this devastating virus. Kentucky has led the way and now is a model for how the distribution of vaccines should work. 
Our plan calls for a reopening of schools, but there will still be a virtual learning option available to families through JCPS. This will be a school-based model, meaning students would still be enrolled at their current school. This format would be very similar to what all families are doing right now with NTI. Students would continue to have access to their assignments and live instruction with Google Classroom, Google Meet, and Microsoft Teams. The last year hasn't been easy, but we have witnessed incredible learning as well during NTI. Our students are so resilient. We know our kids are ready. I can't wait till we are back together. Don't just take it from me. How about we take it from some of them? Learning at home is staying safe, but still be able to learn. My favorite part of learning at home is math. My favorite part of learning at home is I get to eat lunch at home. And my favorite part of learning at home is learning at home. I like learning at home because I don't have to wake up as early. Learning at home is something that I like doing at home because I don't have to wake up as early. What I am most looking for about being back in school is I is everything is organized and I can see my friends again. What I'm most looking forward to going back to school is seeing my friends because I haven't seen them in a long time. I can't wait to go back to school because I just want to see my friends, my teacher, and it's going to be way easier. And I am looking forward to going back to school because I've been there for a long time and they're like my second family and I cannot, and I can't wait to meet everyone. I can't wait to go back to school because I'm about to graduate and I want to see my friends. How awesome is that? I can't wait to see our students' faces again in person, and I am more hopeful than ever before. When our buildings reopen, it will be done in the safest manner possible and follow all guidelines established by state and local leaders. This has definitely been a learning experience for all of us. We're not doctors, we're educators. We are not epidemiologists, but we do save lives in different ways. This evening, I will make my recommendation to the Jefferson County Board of Education about when I believe our schools should reopen. The board members will vote on our plan tonight at 6 o'clock, and you can watch the meeting on our Jefferson County Board of Education YouTube page. First off, I can't thank our board members enough for their time reviewing data, talking to families and staff. Being a school board member is definitely not an easy job, and what has happened over the last year is unlike anything we've ever endured before. Thank you to our board chair, Diane Porter, Vice Chair Chris Cobb, James Craig, Joe Marshall, Corey Shule, Linda Duncan, and Sarah Cole McIntosh for your continued commitment to children and this community. I also want to thank Chris Brady for his time on our Board of Education. He was with us for much of the year as we faced this pandemic and plan for a safe return to school. I appreciate this team more than you know. After careful consideration and collaboration with medical experts, here is my recommendation to the Board of Education. Our plan has always included a progression in our return to school. We want to start by welcoming back some of our youngest learners. My recommendation is for kindergarten through second grade students to return to in-person learning on March 17th. Third through fifth grade would reopen on March 18th, the very next day. My recommendation calls for elementary schools to be in session five days a week. Our youngest students would return to our early childhood program the following Monday on March 22nd. Here is our plan for middle and high school students. In-person learning would begin right after spring break on April 5th. My recommendation calls for a hybrid plan for middle and high schools. Students would go to school two days a week, learn remotely two days a week, and Wednesday would be a remote learning day for all students. Students would be placed in two groups based on their last name. Students whose last name starts with A through K would go to school in person on Mondays and Tuesdays. And students with their last names beginning with L through Z would go to school on Thursdays and Fridays. Students of all grades who elect to remain in virtual instruction would have online classes five days a week as they do now with a similar amount of live and recorded instruction as they have in place currently. 
My recommendation also calls for teachers to have a couple of work days to set up their classrooms before students are welcomed back into the building and to provide needed professional development. I want you to know this is a defining moment for us, a moment that we have worked towards since, cl since we closed our buildings last March. This is also a unifying moment for us. It's the time we come together and support our students like we never have before. Now that we have these safety measures in place, it's time for us to do what's in their best interest. We've built a plan at JCPS, but it will take all of us to make this a success. Whether you are a JCPS employee, a parent, or a community member, let's continue to stand in support of our students. They need us, and I know we've certainly missed them. When students come back to us, we're gonna to have to address lost learning that's occurred over the past year. Our educators have done great work, but we also know we can't make up for lost learning in our current structure. As a district and a community, we must support intentional and engaging opportunities for students outside of the traditional school day. This should include summer programs for a minimum of 30,000 kids, continued partnerships with our community learning hubs, and a continued commitment to increasing student attendance. And the great news, these critical and additional supports for kids will be available for students in months. In the summer of 2021, this summer, we're gonna have thousands of JCPS students access accessing additional instructional time to recover that lost learning. And we're going to see a dramatic improvement in student achievement. What happens in our classroom today impacts what happens in the world tomorrow. We're shaping the future because we dare to believe in a greater path forward that builds new equitable system that lifts up all students. Before the pandemic, we were committed to developing a future for JCPS that looks very different in order to achieve outcomes like we had never seen before. We started calling this our future state. And because of COVID-19 and the pandemic, a better future state for kids is even more important than ever before. You know, I joined JCPS in 1997 and not much change over the next two decades. The foundation of our organization was virtually the same until we started developing a future state plan 18 months ago. But before we could really dig into this, we had a major hurdle to overcome. We had to emerge from the threat of state takeover. The Kentucky Department of Education determined that JCPS does not need state management or assistance after an extensive follow-up audit this past fall. In fact, auditors told us when they came back in the fall to review our work, it was like night and day from their first audit several years ago. In 2017, we had more than 250 deficiencies identified in the audit. Three years later, that number was reduced to less than 30 areas of improvement. That didn't happen by chance. That's a result of strategic planning, and we've also created structures that benefit students. I can't thank our staff and schools enough for their hard work. And I'm so proud that we came out of that corrective action plan uh, with a future state and successful. Our students will have new support in state of the art facilities that meets the needs of 21st century learners. We're in one of the biggest construction booms our district has ever seen. In my past state of the district addresses, I stress the need for new facilities in JCPS. And believe it or not, only four schools in JCPS have been built this century. Worse, the academy at Shawnee has had a condemned third floor since the early 80s. And I'm proud to say we're finally changing that. When we dared to believe, the outcome was that a beautiful school in West Louisville that had a third floor closed off for decades is now in the middle of a $40 million renovation. The Academy at Shawnee is going to be a beacon of hope, not just west of 9th Street, but a marvel for our entire city. When we dare to believe, we can break ground on two new schools. We did that this year. We broke ground on a new school in the Dixie Highway Corridor and one in the Newburgh community. And believe it or not, again, these are the first new schools in these communities this century. And finally, we're preparing to break ground on a third elementary school this spring at 18th and West Broadway. I can't wait to be there for that groundbreaking. For far too long, we've watched other districts break ground on new innovative learning facilities all over the nation. And now we're finally doing it in JCPS.
But we're just not building new schools. We're building new opportunities for our students. Opportunities for an increased sense of belonging among students and establishing connections that lead to increased achievement. We've taken big steps in this area and we took another bold step this year. I'm proud to say that this year, in the midst of a pandemic, we opened the innovative Grace James Academy of Excellence. The school for girls with an Afrocentric and gender-centric curriculum may have started virtually, but the excitement from the students extends beyond any computer screen. And remember, that's three schools we have opened up in the past four years, and they're all innovative and fantastic schools. By daring to believe, we've created meaningful options for our students to discover their passions. It's one of my favorites. Our academies of Louisville have far surpassed similar programs in many other districts and cities across the nation. We have over 55 unique career pathways in our high schools that provide opportunities to earn 120 different industry certifications that will impact the workforce in Louisville, Kentucky. Even in the most unusual school year, nearly 1,000 students have received industry certifications while we've been in the middle of NTI. So I want to really thank the Academies of Louisville Guiding Team, our 135 business partners, as well as GLI and Kentuckiana Works for partnering us with us in this initiative. This is truly a community collaboration to improve student achievement in JCPS. The Academies of Louisville are providing equitable opportunities for students. This program helps students explore their interest by giving them the tools they need to do hands-on learning this initiative offers. Meeting each student's unique needs is at the heart of our racial equity work. And believe me, racial equity is intertwined with each part of our future state. As a matter of fact, it is the focus of each part of our future state. JCPS remains one of the few school districts in the country that has a racial equity policy and plan in place. Our commitment to racial equity is stronger now than it ever has been before. This is where we are, but I want to show you where we're going. This is just the beginning of what can be accomplished. We have so much more to do. We've laid out the transformational change needed to best help students. And this is exactly what it looks like. There are teams of JCPS educators from across our district working right now in these key areas of our future state plan. Student assignment, facilities, expanded learning opportunities, continuous student improvement, resourcing high poverty schools, technology, and workforce and leadership development. These collaborative teams are building a roadmap for the future, the state of JCPS, and this is what I do know. We will become the best in the nation in each and every area of the future state plan. Our student assignment plan has been in place since the 1980s. We need a system that is more equitable and provides students with more access to more schools. If we dare to believe, we can break down what I think is the most racially inequitable system within our structure. And that's our current student assignment plan. Our student assignment plan places the onus of diversity solely on one community. Middle and high school students in predominantly West Louisville don't have a choice. They are the only students in the county who have to travel up to 20 miles to go to a school that isn't their choice if they are not accepted in a magnet program. This happened because there wasn't the political will to make everyone play a role in ensuring diversity. Over the years, the student assignment plan morphed into a rule that doesn't make sense to me. Middle and high school students in West Louisville deserve the same opportunities that every other student in this district has. And this is what it's all about. It's about equity. Your zip code shouldn't dictate the choices you have and the rights available to you. We had an opportunity to speak to West Louisville parents about this plan, and here's what we heard. Hello, my name is Desmond Prince. Um, my son's name is Desmond Prince Jr. He go to Ferdale High School. It's stressful because if he missed the bus, I got to take him way out there. It's, it's pretty far, and I got to make it back to work at the same time. So it's just pretty stressful, and I just, I would like for him to have an option, like, you know what I mean? Or at least for me to have an option. Uh, my name is Zula Bailey Parker. I have two twin boys that go to Stewart Academy, Joshua Parker and Jeremiah Parker. I'm Jeremiah Parker. I'm 13, and I go to Stewart Academy. I'm Joshua Parker. I'm 13, and I go to Stewart Academy. 
freedom. I mean, I think we all should have a, cho a choice as far as schooling. I don't think it's right for kids to go further, way further out when you, they can go closer to home. You know, so yes, it's, it's, to me it's freedom. Part of our future state plan calls for addressing this head on. It's time. Our proposal calls for middle and high school students in West Louisville to have not one, but two choices in where they attend school. They would have the option to select a school close to home or a school in other parts of the community. And I want you to remember this. This isn't about neighborhood schools and it's not about busing. This is, what, this is about what is right for kids and giving a choice to all families. This is going to lead to unprecedented investment from JCPS in West Louisville, which hasn't happened for decades. Under this proposal, we would build a new middle school in West Louisville with the possibility of building a new high school as well. Another area that is critical in our planning is resourcing our schools with the greatest need. We have to provide for our students who are looking to us for help. Students who have the least amount of resources at home must have the most amount of support and resources in their school. And no school will go without. We want to support all of our students. But the needs of our students must be met. Our workforce and leadership development programs will create the strongest principals and teachers in the country. We've already started our teacher residency program designed to attract a more diverse population into our teacher pipeline. Our teaching population should directly reflect our student population, and we must take the intentional steps to make that happen. This is so important in JCPS. We've talked for many years about change, and now we are acting on this plan that will truly have an impact. When teachers make connections with students in the classroom, it can have a lasting impact on their educational outcomes. I have seen this happen. When I was a teacher and a principal, I have seen this happen for students all across this district. Mr. Cooper is one of the teachers who quietly makes a difference and probably doesn't even know it. He's the choir director at No Middle School and has been at the school since 2017. He instills hope in students and has helped them find their voice. Having confidence in middle school can be difficult, but Mr. Cooper sees potential in students and helps students to see their own strengths. I should know, he did that for my daughter Jenna when she was a student at No, and he made all the difference in the world. This is what we do in education, and this is the work that matters. Mr. Cooper invests his time into seeing students succeed. Imagine what kind of change could come when a community-wide investment happens. We must invest in our students in new ways. In May of 2020, our Board of Education took a courageous first step. It's a step that hadn't been attempted in a quarter of a century in JCPS. Our board members put students first and approved a tax measure that would generate more than $50 million a year for Jefferson County Public School students. It wasn't just our board fully behind and supportive of this plan. Business leaders, philanthropists, workforce development innovators, and citizens rallied behind this cause. And they formed a group, Yes for JCPS. And that was so inspiring to me. The organization championed for change in our community. They helped to educate our city on what it takes to see a true difference in outcomes and a path that would lead to measurable success. I thank this group of forward-thinking believers who saw what could be accomplished in JCPS to build a better city and a stronger economy. Fayette County's made that type of commitment to their students. Oldham County's done the same thing. They've made that type of commitment. It was way past time for Jefferson County to stand up and do what's right. Passing this measure in the middle of a pandemic was an ambitious step, but we didn't hesitate. We knew when our students came back to us, the need would be greater than ever, and our support for students would have to be more powerful than it's ever been before. We must advance our future state. We have to do this for our kids. I'm not going to stand by any longer and wait for someone else to be courageous enough to take on the tough tasks. This is our time. We're daring to believe in our future state and JCPS. The future state of JCPS is a new approach to teaching and learning that brings a student to academic excellence. And we get there by working together and by investing in our children. Our community stood up and made a commitment to investing in our students. The organization of all 502 
raise the necessary funds to ensure that every single JCPS high school student is guaranteed a scholarship to Jefferson Community and Technical College and Simmons College of Kentucky. A fall of 502 has raised more than $10 million for this scholarship fund. And this is an absolute game changer for our community. And we thank everyone that has supported the organization of All 502. And there's another way we've invested in our students, and that's through our employee sponsored scholarship fund. Two years ago, we had an idea. The plan was to build a scholarship fund that our employees could contribute to and help students to get to college. And that's definitely one of the best investments you can make in a student's life. We thought we might give away a couple of smaller scholarships, but what we quickly learned, how much our employees wanted to give, and the way we celebrate these scholarships has definitely become my favorite day of the year in JCPS. In our first year, we awarded more than $40,000 to JCPS seniors who needed financial help going to college. But we learned something in that year. We know we needed to make sure that when we gave scholarships, it would be enough to cover every single thing a student needs to complete their degree. So last year we changed and we gave out $80,000 from the scholarship unit uh, fund. The student stories are as incredible as their grades and their perseverance shines bright. was at their houses and I've seen that video multiple times and I still get emotional every time I see the smile on their faces receiving that big check. So you've seen what is possible. This is a difference maker for our students. You can be a part of this as well. We've extended the opportunity to give beyond our employees. You can support this scholarship fund and donate to students by visiting our website, jefferson.kyschools.us and clicking on the scholarship information on our homepage to give. Since my last State of the District address 12 months ago, I know how much has changed and the challenges we've all faced over the past year. I really can't thank all the stakeholders in JCPS enough for their unwavering support, hard work, and their resilience. This includes our JCPS employees, our parents, and our families. Even with the challenge of the past year, I believe we have the opportunity to become a better school district as a result. All was not lost in 2020. We broke ground on two new schools. We got technology into the hands of our students, and we provided millions of meals to families during that pandemic. This is what we are doing in JCPS, and this is what happens when we dare to believe. We are always looking for opportunities to be better than we've ever been. We must be more creative and innovative in meeting the needs of our kids. We've seen how we can do this, and we've already started doing that. Some of the ways we've adapted this school year will lead us to lasting change in the future. We are daring to believe in something that's never been done before in this district.
We will provide more resources to schools in the highest need by attracting and retaining the highest quality teachers. There will be more time for students to develop the skills needed to succeed. We will build structures that help us to achieve true racial equity across our district, from who we hire to how our students see themselves represented in the curriculum. We will end the digital divide for the children of JCPS and ensure they have access to every opportunity. A student's dream should be unlimited. The time to believe again is now. After a year like any other, we are ready to bring our students back to our classrooms. There is definitely no substitute for in-person learning. We've planned, we've prepared, and we are ready to safely reopen our schools. We are building something new in JCPS. Our future state will equip students to change the world. We have dared to believe in this reality. We need you to believe in our kids and their potential. And without a doubt, we need you to believe in the future state of JCPS. Thank you.